And now it's time for your first cup of political brew. Good morning. Welcome to New Center Maine's Political Brew. We are joined today by Republican analyst, former state senator Phil Harriman, and former Democratic state senator and mayor of Portland, Ethan Strimling. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning and happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Yes, exactly. Not guilty as charged. On Saturday, just over five weeks after the Senate chamber was ransacked by the violent mob that stormed the U.S. Capitol, the men and women who work in that chamber voted to acquit former President Donald Trump of inciting the insurrection. Seven Republicans joined all Democrats and independents to convict Trump, but that 57 votes was 10 short of what would have been needed for conviction. Maine Senator Susan Collins was one of the seven Republicans voting guilty as was independent Senator Angus King, who cast a guilty vote. Phil, we'll start with you. What do you think of uh, Susan Collins' guilty vote on Saturday? Uh, the word consistent uh, comes to mind, Pat. She was uh, consistent in uh, uh, impeaching him and, and agreeing with the impeachment hearing. And I think this just keeps her on the, the path that she has been on. Ethan? Yeah, she clearly did the right thing. I wouldn't describe her as consistent. She voted, of course, not to convict when she was up for re-election and Trump still could do damage to her, but good for her for doing this. Look, this is the mi most bipartisan uh, vote uh, for conviction in our country's history, far and away, actually. And uh, I'm very glad. I think Susan Collins, the vote that she took, helped to lead that charge, made very clear that uh, those who were close to her position were going, uh, had an opening there. And I think in the end, seven uh, seven senators coming along with her uh, was as strong a show as you could expect from a Republican Party these days. Obviously disappointing in the total number, but Susan Collins did the right thing. Ethan, what did you think of the case presented this past week? Oh, look, the House managers just did a remarkable job, and I think uh, that's the reason that they kind of got to the seven votes. I think a lot of people weren't sure. Five seemed to be the top. They thought they might lose a couple. Uh, they ended up getting to seven. They really tied Trump very clearly to uh, being the person who, you know, invited the people to D.C., encouraged them to charge the Capitol and then continue the violence without him stepping in. The defense, you know, they basically attacked everything but the evidence. They just ran a campaign of distraction. And it really didn't work. Phil? Well, I, you know, I think it, to, to take the country through this saga, they should have had more clear and convincing evidence of him being engaged in and coordinating and ordering this uh, assault on our nation's capital they just went through and, and, and played on the visuals and the emotions of what happened, but didn't prove that he conspired or he actually uh, incited the behavior that he was accused of. So, Phil, what the do you think the weapon is? Well, go ahead, Ethan. Go yeah, ahead. Just a real quick, Phil, though. Most of the Republicans are not saying that Trump was not the instigator. In fact, Mitch McConnell, as you know, gave an impassioned speech afterwards, basically saying Trump was at fault. They voted no because of a constitutionality about whether the trial should occur. So I think the House managers made the case. This was Trump's fault. Republicans bailed on a technicality. No, I, I see it very differently. I, I think that the constitutionality was what the Senate is empowered to determine. And thus, your comments, I, I agree with. If Donald Trump is responsible for this behavior, they should go into the criminal court system, and that's where the decision should be rendered. Well, Phil, what do you think is the lesson that the nation's going to take from Donald Trump's acquittal in the Senate? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Pat. I, I've been concerned uh, about this whole process because had this passed and he was convicted, there would be a whole new political weapon that would be available for future uh, majority leaders in the Congress and uh, from the opposing party of the president. I am, I'm, I'm happy for our country that we don't have yet another political weapon to use. Ethan? Uh, I think the lesson learned, sadly, is that a president can incite a riot against the Congress of the United States to try to overturn a legitimate election. They are not, even our Congress will not step up and convict that person and make sure they can never run for office again. This was as much of a dereliction of duty as any president in our history. And the fact that they didn't convict is a very sad day. 
Now for something a little closer to home, Maine Health draws fire for its decision to vaccinate all of its 22,000 employees, even those who did not meet state guidelines for vaccine distribution, including some out-of-state contractors who had been brought in to squelch efforts to have nurses form a union. Governor Mills calls it inexcusable, saying it undermines the public's confidence in our efforts and was not the appropriate way to give away our precious vaccine. And she adds that vaccinating out-of-state contractors who came here to disrupt a union organizing effort was an insult to the hardworking nurses trying to assert their rights and those who've been waiting patiently for their turn. Ethan, what do you make of all this? Uh, boy, main meds values have been backwards for the last uh, few months, you know, refusing to pay hazard pay to their frontline workers while they are paying their surgeons to stay at home, multi hundreds of thousands of dollars, trying to bust up a union. And now it turns out vaccinating people who didn't need to be vaccinated, not coming in contact and out of state consultants. Uh, they really need to look hard in the mirror. You know, the, the nurses over there are unionizing. I think there's a very good opportunity now for them to get it across the finish line simply because main males values are so backwards. Uh, Phil, this was kind of a scolding from the governor, wasn't it? Oh, there's no question about it. But, you know, I think it's important that we all take a look at the other side of the story. Maine Health is one of the most celebrated quality providers of health care in America by independent uh, surveys. They acknowledge that they vaccinated, I think, a dozen or fewer people that the governor criticized. So they, they own that, acknowledge it. But look at it from the other perspective. There's 22 or 23,000 employees of Maine Health throughout the state of Maine who are vaccinated so that our health care system doesn't suffer from, uh, you know, a, a, a spreading outbreak of COVID as they go about going into the communities to help vaccinate uh, Maine citizens. There's always another side to the story. Yeah, but Phil, you got to recognize that they didn't vaccinate the people going into the communities. They vaccinated people who are working at home. They vaccinated people who are sitting and, you know, at computers. They vaccinated people who are not coming in contact with patients instead of vaccinating patients, you know, our parents, our grandparents, people who desperately need it. Sure. I, and I acknowledge the optics uh, don't look very well for Maine Health, but whether you're uh, in the janitorial department or in the IT department or in a leadership position, we need the healthcare system from top to bottom to be prepared to, to service. And I think Maine Health went about this in a way in which they could assure that their providers, wherever they are in the healthcare system, were protected. All right, we got lots more to talk about this morning on Political Brew. We'll do that in the next hour. News Center Maine is back after this.